And hello everyone, this is Elliot Serrano and Jose Melendez coming to you from Dreamland Comics in Schaumburg, Illinois. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Comic Culture Warrior YouTube channel where you will find Jose and I discussing several different topics in comic books, comic culture, movies, video games. Well, you know, we haven't talked about video games in a while. We probably need to do that. We can do a whole, like, hour segment on video games yeah. when that's all I do. Really? Because uh, Red Eye is doing a, um, we're going to be doing a... Um, greatest video game tournament soon so oh, that's kind of cool so we'll talk about that but um back to uh, addressing some of the comments that we get so just so you know that i read each and every video comment that we get and, and I, I try to you try and I, I don't i don't i every couple of days i go oh and i want i want actually really quick um there was a comment left uh about a month and a half ago when we were um talking about the remake of the Spanish movie record and it's not quarantine. Quarantine's quarantine, yeah. There's actually uh, a commenter who actually posts a lot of comments, Johnny Horror. Uh, he actually had um, recommended that I watch a French movie, Frontier. Oh, yeah? Frontiers. Um, and I want to tell him that I, I saw it and that movie kicked ass. Okay, so, Frontiers? It's called Frontiers. Frontiers. Yeah, it is, that movie is fucking crazy. It's okay. an awesome movie. But well, I did want to want to acknowledge that, that uh, I did take his recommendation because I try to see a lot of horror movies in general not uh -huh. just foreign horror movies and that right. one just kind of slipped through the cracks but i finally got around to seeing it and it was awesome cool cool and uh i'll i know uh when i finally saw that trailer to quarantine um it, it looks interesting I no mean, I'll it, it if, it's it a, really if it's a shot for shot remake of record um that movie has the potential to be one of the best horror movies yeah in the theaters here in a very long time okay because that movie I watched a lot of horror movies, and it actually there were points that it actually scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that's some good. pretty good jumps. But man, that movie, okay. I, as long as it's if if it is a shot for shot remake, it will scare a lot of people, and okay. it's very very well done. It looks intense. The trailer looks intense. The movie is intense. Yeah, yeah it really okay. is. So so yes, we read each and every comment that you guys make, and um, and I enjoy them. And um, soon enough, I'm gonna hope hopefully start making video um, comments, but. I'm not there yet. But in, in either case, uh, there was a comment that was made. Um, I can't remember it verbatim, but it, in essence, it was we were we were basically being called to task that we're we're DC fanatics, that you and I just like DC books, mm -hmm. that we don't like Marvel books. Um, and I uh, like with Secret Invasion, the, the commenter, and I apologize for not remembering your name because I want to give you credit for it, but the, the comment was that Secret Invasion is outselling Final Crisis, mm -hmm. and basically, you know that the Secret Invasion is kicking Final Crisis's ass, and you know that's all. Eh. Well, but but I guess the point I wanted to make this for because of that we are we both like DC and we want to sell DC. Now mm -hmm. I, I I just have to say this, and, and I'll let you know I'll let you say anything you want, but um, I don't know if you folks have noticed a dynamic here. I'm kind of a Marvel fanatic. I'm kind of I call myself I'm a Marvel zombie, and I and I'm really more into Marvel books, which is ironic because I have so many friends who work at DC. Whereas I'm a recovering Marvel zombie. You're a recovering Marvel zombie, but yeah. but you're really you know you, a lot of the stuff that you like and you read and that you've kind of getting been getting me into are DC books. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a nice little back and forth there. And the reason I've been ragging so much on Secret Invasion is because it's a Marvel book, and I care about Marvel books. And if I don't care about it, I wouldn't read it. So, so in, any, in either case, but um, to be called the you know DC chill for that point, you know, hey, no, well, I mean, for me, I do buy Marvel books, select Marvel books, and that I, I think are really good. But I, I've made this comment before: is that it seems all of the Marvel books that I like. Get canceled. Get canceled, right? You know, and um, I will have to say that I still think X Factor is a solid book. I really like that book, but it has mostly to do with Peter David, right? Um, and I like the fact that X Factor that title usually steers clear of crossovers and stuff like that, right? I mean, it does. I mean, they did have like Secret Invasion crossover, but it really wasn't a Secret Invasion right. crossover. Um, but uh, and I will give credit to. Dan Slatt's current story of on Amazing Spider-Man, the anti-venom, I think is probably the best Spider-Man story that I have read in years. Mm -hmm. I mean, just that that story alone. Um, well, all, the the first Dan Slatt run on Amazing Spider-Man with Steve McNiven was okay. Mm -hmm. This uh, the next one that he did with um, uh, Marcus Martin, the two-parter with Paper Doll, I thought was awesome. And then 
uh, this anti-venom story with the John Romita Jr. It, it reads like an old Spider-Man, and they're finally bringing in the stuff that made Spider-Man Spider-Man. They're, they have Harry Osborn in there, and he's becoming right. the Green Goblin again. Right. You have all these things that made Spider-Man awesome. Right. And, and Dan Slott, I mean, I give that guy all the credit in the world after one more day. After that big shit bomb hit, <laughs> and like, I, I, I seriously thought, I'm like, there's no way they're ever going to recoup. But the Dan Slott stories and Amazing Spider-Man are doing an awesome job of telling good Spider-Man stories. And, and again, I've, I, I like, I've liked the Spider-Man stuff up to a point. There's been some stuff that I've just... The, the problem right now is I only have so much money to buy so many books, and you've got to you've got to really keep me invested in these books or in these characters. And the problem I've been having with the Spider-Man books is that when they shift, when they change creative teams, the, the what really kept me interested, they lose it because yeah. the, the no, next totally writer, agree. and it's nothing against that particular writer or creator. They're just going in their own direction in their well, own some, thing. Some, one of those four writers should not be writing comics, but because his his storylines are awful. Who's that? Um, uh, the guy who wrote Back to the Future. Oh, uh, uh, Bob Gale. Bob, I'm sorry, man. Those are it. That's a when a comic is a chore to get through, no. like it's homework. It's not fun anymore, no. and his are I can't stand them. Dan Slott stories are really good. The Zeb Wells one were okay, Zeb but Wells. the Dan Slott ones by far. But Mark Wade's coming on. He's going to be doing a story arc, uh, and I'm actually looking forward to that. Oh, okay. And Marco Martin is going to be drawing that story arc too. Okay. Um, well, Mark Wade is supposed to be doing the uh, Stephen Colbert uh, Spider-Man team up, which ought to be <laughs> ought to be a hoot. But no, but I do like Marvel books. But th- there's just so much shit out there. Um, and, and I think the biggest problem that I have with Marvel is that all of the Avengers books and that side of Marvel, I don't like. Because I don't like what Brian Michael Bendis is doing creative. And he has cr- total creative control over everything yeah. on the Avengers side. And right. that's what's really big with Marvel. And I can't stand it. The farther I can get from the Avengers universe to Marvel, the more I enjoy the books. Right. Seriously. Well, see, and the, there is a problem, though, is that they're breaking it into the Avengers universe now and the X-Men universe. Oh, the X-Men, I don't even know if it's not a part of the Marvel universe yeah. anymore. They are, there's no more interaction. Right, and then um, and then you have somewhere in there, some little sliver is the Spider-Man universe. But it doesn't seem to touch anything else because everything that goes on in Spider-Man seems to have absolutely nothing to do not with what's going on in the other and, But remember, like, Spider-Man used to tie in close with Daredevil and yeah. Fantastic Four. Yeah, all, yeah. I mean, it right. used to be, like, all those, like, middle titles were very tightly knit, mm-hmm. but now it's just, like, you have Mil- Miller doing Fantastic Four, and that's its own thing. And Going you off have, on its own, You right. have Spider-Man, uh, amazing, that's its own thing. Daredevil, uh, it's his own thing. I mean, there's no, there's no more interconnection, and I think that's what the problem is with some of these summer events, like Civil War. It does... It, since there's no interconnection... Um, editorially, I think with all of the main books, when they finally throw them all together, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Right. You know, characters are talking like they shouldn't be talking, and right. and they don't know they're not following continuity in their right. own separate. You know, right. and I, that's what I have a problem with, and it's the problem that I have with Secret Invasion is that it's just a whole lot of horseshit, right. just all thrown in the mixer, and you know, I don't know. Well, that, that's the problem when you try, try to create a universe that's supposed to be a shared universe. There's a lot of work that goes into making it seem cohesive. And right now, as of late, with everything they're doing in the fanta- in, in all the Marvel books, it's like a, that yeah. cohesiveness is totally, it's you totally know, gone. It's totally gone. And, and, you know, maybe that's being uh, overly critical, but that's kind of the precedent that was set when you work so hard. And I know they've, they all, they'll, and they're going to do this at some point. Uh, Joe Quesada is going to pass down this edict. We're going to make, you know, put the Marvel Universe back together again and do all that. And, it's never going to happen. And there'll be another event. No, watch. There'll be another no. event. But it, who's, I'm not saying it's going to work. That's just what it's going to say. But, hey, I, but see, we're being critical. But it doesn't mean we don't like Marvel Comics or I like Marvel I Comics. I used to love Marvel Comics. And, and I, it's just a lot of, a lot of my uh, hatred now comes from the, the fact that I did love them. And just I, the, how all these books and characters have... Just turn into the you know, just shadows of their former for uh, mm. former glory, and it's just and it pains me, it really does. But yeah, pains me too.